recently from Ireland. I mean, two days ago I came, but yes, yeah. You are welcome to this uh, eighth international conference uh, on sleep surgery. It's a life surgery and OSA. Uh, actually, from the beginning of this workshop, more nicely to me, professors, Mazumdar, actually we are here. Uh, I usually act as a national faculty, but I don't know why they put me in international faculty now this time. Uh, just uh, I just uh, finished my government service, you know, from Bangladesh, and I now joined uh, uh, in one of the hospital. I'm working at Leverick University Hospital. So my topic is uh, hypoglossal graph stimulation. Uh, it's a novel approach for the treatment of OSA. Actually, uh, just I met uh, Dr. Tamanna is, I think uh, she is seven years junior to me in Dhaka Medical College, right? Fine. So I think she is working on that. Uh, uh, so actually, this topic is really new to all of us, but not for Tamanna because they are practicing this. Uh, as you know, we have already discussed many things about the sleep apnea. Uh, I don't want to go for the introduction because uh, most of the presenters have discussed everything about the medical issue, treatment of sleep apnea at different surgical levels. But the question is, lots of questions coming up that the patients are not aware of the CPAP machines, uh, the adherence of the CPAP machines, you know. Uh, sometimes the patients just forget, no, I, I don't want to use this CPAP machine, it, it's bothering me actually, and something is not working. So then what is the next question then? You know, what is the next step then? Because the, the, as you know, more of, many of the surgery has not that much effective. So our in, in Europe and America, I mean, in, especially in Europe, in Ireland and, and UK, uh, we don't have that much sleep surgery because they are fed up with that surgery. All these discipline surgery, they are fed up. So what we did offer: take the sleep back, reduce your change your lifestyle, reduce your body weight, don't take alcohol something like that. So in this way we. Convince the patient and CPR, but when the CPR is not working, then what is the next step? So that next step is my topic of discussion is hypoglossal nerve stimulation. And so that is my topics actually today. So this is the, my, the front view of the hospital where I am working now at the moment is Lemerick University Hospital. Now Lemerick is uh, third largest city in Ireland, and Ireland is a beautiful country. Uh, you all are welcome to my. New Ireland, I love Ireland because this is my third time I visited there. I was there before in 1990 and then I worked there in 1995 to 1999. And after 22 years, I went back at this old age. I don't know why. And you're welcome because we have a uh, the next year we have a beautiful uh, head neck conference. So we all are invited. I will sponsor all of you. You got to go. Okay, so now introduction, as I said, uh, we know uh, about 24% uh, of the adult patients had loud hepatitis snorter and 50% had the severe OSA. Now, we discussed about the treatment, and dis different discipline. So the new device is ACNS, hypoglossal nerve stimulation. Uh, I'm very scared of, uh, you know, saying something in presence of one of the American faculties you know, so what is hypoglossal nerve stimulation? It's actually a device, actually. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a device which says a pacemaker, right? Even good? It is one of the pacemaker for the slips, for the OSA. So, and it's, of course, it's, a, it's an implanted device. So it's not like CPAP. The, the, the advantage of CPAP is okay. You stay on hold this one, fix the mouth, you put the face uh, mask, and switch on the light and sleep. And our machine will, will dilate your these things, you know. But this is an implantable device. That is the main question. And it's a long procedure, a surgical procedure. And it's very, very expensive as well. The cost of, of the, uh, this uh, device is about, uh, in, U, in USA actually, because they have an insurance coverage, the people have to pay uh, $1,500 actually in, a, in excess of this insurance company. But the cost is about thirty to forty thousand US dollar. What do you think? Nowadays it reduced because it was thirty to forty thousand initially, you know. 
So that's why the liberation. Now the question is, so how it works actually? That we say that the most important part is, as you know, yesterday Malika was saying that time is the most important. Now time is the most important obstacle, you know, level rather than the nose and palate. So the genuine process master is the main distributor. Here we stimulate the genuine process master. And when they stimulate the genuine process master, they just contact the tongue and then just push on the tongue so that the tongue moves forward to make good space actually that patients can breathe actually. And they have a sensor there when the patient sleeps. They have sensor. I will show you how they use actually this on the device. Uh, so this is a very good effective way that when the patient uh, in sleep, they stimulate the breathing muscles and they stimulate the signals to the other, the pulse generator and the front pulse generator to the calf electrode at the tongue base at the hypoxic nerve and they stimulate the generation muscle and the tongue will be put forward, give a good space and the patient have very good effective uh, sound sleep without OSA. So history of is how it comes actually. It was 2001 actually, Schwartz et al. First, this guy was still and successfully implanted the hypervision stimulation. Uh, and then uh, subsequently, Apnex Medical developed the first commercially available this, this device. And they went to market in our business in 2013. But they have another study. They showed that there is not that much successful rate actually. And then the last is the Inspire Medical System. Now, I think that in the USA, in all over the world, the Inspire Medical Device is the current uh, hypersonal solution device which is FDA approved in USA and they are using in UAE, yeah, Ireland as well as in UK this device. Okay, so. So this is the basic format of this, uh, of this, uh, is there any pointer here, this one, yes. So the inspect device is an implantable uh, pacemaker, as I said. So there is a sense, uh, sensing lead which is uh, placed in the chest here and the rib muscles and that means the in between the uh, external and internal intraocular muscles there. So that is the sensor. So when the patient pees, actually, they give a signal from the sensor here. And then, actually, I will show how to uh, do this one. So, and then, they give a stimulation link to the pulse generator here, uh, and then from there to the calf electrode and the general muscle stimulation. So this is the... So that is, the, the, uh, that is uh, how it works, I said. So, the, as you know, the hypoglossal nerve stimulation implant sends a, a gentle pulse synchronized with the patient's breathing. And this pulse signals the hypoglossal nerve to move the tongue forward, as I said. So it's the electrical device implanted inside the body. So this is the main part now. Yes. So as I say, this is the implantable device like pacemaker. There is a sensor, and that is placed. That giving an incision here, uh, and after exposing the standard program, sorry, uh, pectoral major muscles, will go inside the rib actual case, uh, and uh, in between the external and internal intraocular muscles, we make a, a big tunnel here, make a big tunnel here, and then. Previously, there are three incisions. One is subclavicular here, high here, and a submandibular incision. But nowadays, with the, with the inspired device, they make two incisions. Right, Tamanna? So one is here, the incision is here, and another is just submandibular uh, incision. Now, what happened first? The first, actually, we give incision here, like we are doing submandibular trunk incision. So, why we give incision here and then we try to get the uh, intermediate digestive muscle, push the digestive muscle, pull out with the roof, uh, and then we go to the hypoglossal nerve. We try to identify the hypoglossal nerve, and we cannot put this device in the hypoglossal nerve straight away with the peripheral branches. Why supply the general muscle? So we, we, we follow the hypoglossal nerve 
we can use the operating microscope or loof actually because they are using operating microscope and then we just identify the the branches we supply the genetic muscle and then we put this device this is called cast vector here and then we give another decision here as I said and there is another sensor bit here and then we make from here to here uh, just a, a tunnel a tunnel with the wire so and then from here the connecting loop is with this pulse generator because this pulse generator was previously in uh, just uh, in place here with the separate system but now they are not so actually from this tunnel they make a big tunnel and then connect to this one I have some picture I will show you so but this is a description so after setting this up close the home and wait for one month and then ultimately as Kamana said that we check this one with the, with the, with the activation So this is actually a breathing monitor. Uh, as I said, the three, these are the things like uh, this pulse generator is just like a, a disc actually, small disc actually. Or you can coin, you can say the coin. And that is the last, the, the first one, submandibular incision, the cuff lector. The fits around a branch of the nerve, as I said. Now, so this is that's a picture of the, of the, of the operative uh, field actually. And as I said, I will describe this on how we make this one. The incision and then all this. I think we discussed this one. So basically this is like a you know the cochlear implant device or any other implantable device. So now the, my question is at the, the operation time actually usually takes two hours actually, you know. But those who are very fast. They can be one and a half hours, but it's lengthy procedure. Now, who are the who are the candidates? Now the question most burning is who are the candidates for this? Can I do this operation to everybody? No. There is some criteria. There is some criteria who are the candidate. Now this is a classical criteria. Who are the candidate? Now first thing is CPAP intolerance. That means CPAP intolerance. The person cannot afford CPAP or cannot just follow the CPAP. I don't like this guy. As I said, what is the next step in this one? So this is the intolerance. Number two, moderate to severe OSA. And ASA level should be 50 to 65. Not above that. Not even in the mind, actually. So there is a number two character. Number three, PMI. PMI index should be 32 or less. Not over 32. So lots of limitation, right? And also, uh, absence of complete concentrated collapse. Dr. Srinivas, you see this done because as I said, the dice actually, we did an excellent entroposter collapse, lateral collapse, and complete circumferential collapse. So, this kind of work on complete circumferential collapse. The patient who have this one is student from this, so they are not the fit candidate for this. So, this is the very important uh, criteria for, for this uh, hyperosomal stimulation. Sorry. So after that, actually, that this, this is a, I think uh, this is the star trial. Actually, they did this one uh, in uh, just this is the, in 2016. Actually, the published 36 months outcome and uh, about 126 patients, CPAP intolerant patients, they did this uh, hypothalamus study, and ultimately the result is, is very effective. I mean, the uh, two 12 months follow-up uh, mean ASA decrease 52 percent from 32 to 15. Median ASI decreased 68%. Uh, so this is a very good outcome actually with this study. After that, there is another study they did, and that that study shows about 95% uh, achievement on ASI less than 15. Uh, so I think uh, limitation, as I said, this is very costly. Yes, I finished. This is very costly, uh, and. Uh, CBAP is currently gold standard of for ASA. Still, CBAP is the gold standard uh, because it is uh, cost effective and, and non invasive. Uh, so, in conclusion, I would like to say that uh, we, we can dream actually because we love to dream. I think we can dream that someday our junior doctor are working on this one and they are doing this, this implant actually in Bangladesh. Uh, like cochlear implant, which we did before, now it's a dalba. You know, dalba is very cheap, 
Every day I am doing cocktail plan in Bangladesh. So one day I, I hope it will be a dal in Bangladesh. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me.